Hi everybody, my name's Matt and we're back with another mesh modeler tutorial where today we're going to be talking about how to move the respawn point for checkpoints. So I'll go in and validate the track and we'll demonstrate why you might want to use this. So one of the important things when you're building a track is making sure that every checkpoint is double respawn. So for example, if I go down the hill full speed, I can make this jump, uh, land it perfectly and go ahead and finish the track. However, if I've messed up this checkpoint, like let's say I was aimed straight at the wall as I was crossing this checkpoint, and I crash into the wall and I couldn't make the jump. So I'll go ahead and respawn, but my respawn is always gonna send me straight into this wall, and no matter what inputs I use, I'm always gonna bang into this wall and miss the jump. So when this happens, you can double tap respawn, um, press it twice, and it will set your car stationary at the checkpoint. Uh, this is really useful to recover from any bad um, checkpoints, but the problem here is we now don't have enough speed to make this jump. So there's a common solution for that, and that involves moving the respawn point for that checkpoint so it's on a booster. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some boosters here with a brand new jump, and we're going to create a custom item that looks exactly like this checkpoint, but the respawn point is gonna be here on top of our booster. So that way, even if we mess up the checkpoint, we can still make the jump. So we'll go ahead and go to item mode and click on create new item from selected block. And we're gonna go ahead and select our ch the checkpoint block that we wanna to modify. And we'll go and click on mesh, or actually uh, you don't have to click on mesh, but just click on the gear here and that will let us modify the spawn position. So the um, spawn position, let's see, we'll click this settings here. Uh, you can see the indicator here, it's this blue arrow. Um, so we can move it by editing the layer attributes. So the X, Y, Z coordinates, and then the angles as well. So you can drop your car or have that respawn point be at any angle you want to. So in this case, I'm just gonna move it over so it's on top of these boosters. So I'm gonna set the X position to 80 and I'll set the Z position to negative 24. And when I did that, now we can see this blue arrow is essentially the same level as our checkpoint, but it's gonna be over um, offset here to be on top of our yellow booster. So now we'll go ahead and save the item and I'm just gonna call it checkpoint. And hit back, and then we'll edit the placement parameters. So this will let us more easily place the block and we'll select a horizontal size of 32 and a vertical size of eight. So this will just make it a lot easier to place it in the perfect location. Go ahead and save the item again. So now that we've edited our placement parameters and the spawn position, we can go ahead and place our block. So this is our custom block with a, a custom uh, spawn point. So we'll go ahead and delete that, put our new spawn point here, and let's validate the track and give it a try. So now when we double respawn from this checkpoint, we should land directly on the booster and we'll still be able to make the jump. So I'll go ahead and crash this, double respawn around the booster, so we can just go ahead and smoothly make the jump and finish the track. So this is super useful for um, like when someone's learning a track for the first time, they're bound to make mistakes. And so by having nice um, checkpoint respawn points and making sure that every point is double respawnable, uh, it makes your track a lot easier to learn. Uh, and given for cup of the day, you only have 15 minutes to learn the track or even on the review server, you only have three minutes to learn the track. Uh, it's really nice to do that. Uh, the other really useful thing this is for is making puzzle tracks. So you could have a checkpoint start at one point, pop up some text that says double respawn, and then you could be at a different point. And so if you're trying to make some kind of, of lull track or, or some really creative track, you can really leverage this to go from room to room or um, do something more creative with it as well. 
So thanks everybody for watching. Um, definitely appreciate everyone who's commented on the last video, encouraging me to make more. Let me know in the comments what other tutorials you might wanna see. And I'm planning on doing something with Blender soon on how to uh, make a, a block in Blender and import it into Track Minion. So hopefully we'll have a video about that soon. So thanks everybody for watching and hopefully you have a great rest of your day.